A few weeks ago, I posted my review and thoughts on Li Ning's very popular and incredible looking Aeronaut 9000 series rackets. However, I was missing one of the 9000 series rackets back then, but today we complete the full set. In my review, I tested the normal Aeronaut 9000, which Anthony Ginting plays with, as well as the 9000C, which Ong Yu Sin uses, as well as the 9000I, which Go Jin Wei plays with at the moment. If you want to refresh yourself with that review before watching this, link is up here as well as in the description below. Central Sports was very kind to loan me their Aeronaut 9000 Drive or 9000D demo racket for testing to make this review video possible. So remember to use my discount code CKYW when shopping with them for additional discounts. Thanks again to Central Sports. As usual, let's start with the aesthetics. I've been a big fan of the 9000 series due to its incredible matte finish alongside very sharp futuristic designs and this 9000D doesn't disappoint. It has this distinctive neon lime paint job all over which is accentuated by the darker shades of matte green around the T-joint area of the racket. It also has pretty big patches of holographic foil around its 10 and 2 o'clock section which is pretty unusual for a badminton racket but very cool indeed. You can tell I like bright colours. What do you all think of the racket design of the 9000D? Let me know in the comment section below. As a 9000 series racket, the 9000D obviously shares a lot of its technology that's implemented across the whole series. Like the range defining four air gaps that is around the T-joint area, the cubit locking square grommets within its top half recessed frame area, which also is part of its dynamic optimum frame design, the leaning embossed grommets, the TB Nano and wing stabilizer technology, including including finally the 32 pounds recommended limit for stringing tensions. In terms of measurements, the 9000D has a shaft diameter of 7.2 millimeters with a shaft length of 21 centimeters. It's got a handle size of 17 and a half centimeters and at S1 grip size, that's actually a G6 in Yonex and Victor terms. So super small grip size, which I personally love. As mentioned earlier, like the other 9000 series rackets, the 9000D has a top half recess frame with a frame thickness of 10 millimeters and a frame height of 24 as well as a 18 and a half centimeters width. Identical measurements across all four rackets. However, looking at that full retail price, this makes it one of the most expensive rackets, although Leaning generally has a higher price range across the whole market compared to other big brands such as Yonex and Victor again. So make sure you guys use my discount code for the extra discount. Although there were plenty of similarities across all four rackets in the series, this is where all that similarity ends and there are a few quirky differences. First of all, the 9000D is the only 4 U racket out of the 4. And because the Aeronaut series rackets doesn't have its full racket spec printed or etched somewhere onto the racket shaft or cone, I only noticed it was a 4U racket after taking a closer look at the barcode on the wrapped plastic handle. The 9000 and 9000C are 3U rackets, whilst the 9000I is a 5U racket. Four rackets covering three weight classes here. In terms of play and field, the 9000D doesn't feel anything like the other three rackets as well, although it was very good at one thing, driving which is perhaps why it was named 9000 Drive. The 9000D felt significantly head lighter than the 9000C and the 9000, which on the plus side meant it felt very, very fast. However, on the other hand, it had that similar hollow feeling that the Blade X800, which I had tested and reviewed recently, link here. The crisp, but slightly hollow hitting feeling meant that the 9000D doesn't feel like it had the stability of the 9000C or even the 9000. It again also felt similar to the 4U model of the Blade X800 racket, which was quite demanding in terms of timing for bigger strokes and pure power shots. You have to keep this in mind if you're looking to purchase this racket. But for anything that is short, sharp and fast, the 9000D is all over it and with its G6 or S1 grip, maneuverability is super smooth and very easy. Another advantage of the small grip is, you can always layer it up and make it bigger if you want to. And because it's fast and easy to maneuver, it goes without saying that defense and counter attacking with the 9000D was super fun and very enjoyable, so long as you have your timing on point. However, I did find myself mistiming shots on a few occasions, especially on the front court. Maybe my timing was completely off or the racket was too fast. I went back to playing with the 9000 and I had no timing issues, so maybe it was the 9000D that was too fast for me. So all in all, out of the four, the 9000C is the most powerful. The 9000I is the lightest overall, hence fastest, but if you consider the jump in power from the 9000I to the 9000D, the 9000D is very, very fast. So certainly a special mention there. 
In terms of balance, ignoring all the balance points numbers, the 9000C certainly felt head heavy for me, the 9000 felt even balance, whilst the 9000D and 9000i both felt head light. The 9000D somewhat feels like a doubles specialist racket, although I do wonder why there are no pros who are playing with it on the circuit. Let me know what you think in the comment section below about the 9000D as well as the full 9000 series. I'll see you in the next one.